Hello there and welcome back to the studio. Today, here's an image of the painting that will be created in today's episode. Yes, today's episode is going to be the um, the usual paint along style where it's the single, single camera angle. Uh, you'll have this 8x10 inch cotton canvas to palette over there so you don't miss any of the painting or mixing footage. Now then, what I'm going to do is use a little bit of odorless mineral spirits onto this little tiny brush. Okay, so standard procedure here. I'm going to start off with the composition. Uh, that is the placement of the image in space. But before I do that, here is an image of the original Cecilia Bew oil painting. Cecilia Bew or Cecilia Bow, not sure. I think it's Cecilia Bow, the, cor the correct pronunciation. Um, uh, go ahead, feel free to correct me in the description box down, description, really? In the comments down below, comment section. Yeah, let's get the painting. All right, so the top of the hair, uh, I'm going to place it all the way up in the top corner over here. And um, if you would like to draw or paint along with me, I highly suggest it. This is going to be a much longer video than the ones... Uh, the past two videos that I had been uploading, uh, the experimental videos, it seems that um, most folks prefer this type, which is okay, um, until I can get, you know, better uh, camera set up. Okay, so the top of the hair, I'm going to say goes about there. Okay. There's the back of the hair. And um, so since I'm painting and talking at the same time, uh, there will be moments where I'm going to be uh, extremely quiet, so I won't really be talking as much, you know, in, in times where I'm more focused, which again, um, you may prefer that way anyway. So a little bit more mineral spirits into the burnt umber. Okay, so again, if you want to know exactly what colors I'm using, uh, feel free to scroll down to the description box down below and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. Okay. All right. So the bottom of the chin is going to go there. Though we are looking at a profile view, um, you know, meaning turn to the side, I, I still want to be very cautious of the placement of the head and treat it just like any other, um, you know, portrait even though it's a profile okay so I'm gonna say that this is going to be the placement this is going to be where I want the head to be placed so now let's go ahead and look at the orientation of the head there is a quite a bit of movement the head is tilted back so I'm going to go ahead and put in this little axis right there very lightly for the eyes axis for the nose over here axis for the mouth Okay, all right. Notice how there's less paint there. That's just because I'm trying to, you know, figure out the orientation of the head. There's the back of the ear. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is jump into the block in stage now that I have the gesture, meaning the overall dynamic movement, though that ear is probably going to have to move down quite a bit, so probably down to about there. But anyway, now let's get into the block in. So the block in, I'm going to try and be very precise uh, with this block in. So I'm going to start off with the concavity of the eye socket. Remember the block in just means um, basically the simplification of form into a set of series of a series of straight lines and angles. Okay, so the eye, I'm looking at the corner of the eye. Thank you. 
eyebrow up there. Oh yes, and looking into the comments, I had a couple folks ask about the water mixables. Why haven't I been using the water mixables? Um, it's not that I won't use water mixables again. Uh, the water, uh, or I like to call water cleanable oil paints, these are traditionals. Um, it was kind of an experimental phase for me to try that out. Um, I can, and I most likely will, uh, use water mixables again in the future. It's just, for me, they're basically the same when it comes to this kind of painting. It's just the handling, or sorry, the cleaning is different. The cleaning is a bit easier. But since I'm working on a, <clears throat> excuse me, on a series of studio paintings or a bunch of studio paintings, uh, I kind of just take the paint right off of here and just go right back into my studio work uh, whenever I'm done filming a YouTube video. So that's the reason why, um, the main reason why I haven't been using water mixables in a while, just because, you know, in my studio work, my own studio work, I work uh, mainly in traditional oils. Though I have completed some um, studio paintings only using water cleanable oil paint. It's just this is my preferred medium. So again, the main triangle, okay? Even though this is a profile view. Now there's quite a uh, difficult smile. Half of the face is gonna be in shade. So right now, though this looks kind of goofy, I'm not really worried about it. Yeah, I'm more, I'm more focused on this outside shape. Though that, that little shape there is starting to bother me. It's still too soon to consider you know, the expression or the smile or whatever. So this is a dry, fairly used up bristle brush that I'm using right now. Okay, so I don't want to overwork the um, the umber sketch. I know that I can do much more into the umber sketch, but um, I don't know. At this point, I just kind of feel like jumping into the colors. I feel like this is a much more kind of impressionist uh, painting, meaning there's a lot of color. So I, I really do want to jump into the color fairly soon. We've already been painting for just under 10 minutes, so yeah, I think with this brush stroke, let's go ahead and transition into color. So I'm gonna switch into bristle brushes again. Um, if you want to know exactly what brushes I'm using and or purchase the same type of uh, materials that I'm using, um, the links will be in the description box down below. So some of these colors here have actually been on the glass uh, for well, a couple weeks now since the last time I shot a video in this style. So that, you know, putting the wet paint, so I put wet paint over paint that was already dry or drying. It helped to absorb some of the oil in the, um, in the paint. So the paint is really thick just something I like and uh, you know when it absorbs the paint like that you'll if you wonder why oil painters do this like layer paint like wet over dry paint on their palettes um, 
it just kind of soaks up the oil kind of nicely. And if you really want to, like I'm probably going to do, see that, I'll just dig into the paint and get, um, get fresh oil paint because it kind of dries over the corners. It dries like kind of like a, I don't know, like a shell, leaving some of the um, wet colors inside. So you don't really lose too much oil paint by doing this. Okay, so I put in the main two lights, a little bit of light on the earlobe, and then the light on the corner of the uh, the uh, zygomatic bone. Okay, so now we're going to start to put in some plane divisions. This is going to be my first plane division, okay, from this point to this point. Okay. And now it's going to get lighter again up here. Okay. So as I do this, I'm going to also uh, put in the dark surrounding the hair. So we're going to be working pretty much plane by plane. Going to move fairly quickly. Okay. So now we have transitioned from the block in stage to the large plane stage. So we are now, yeah, like I said, in the large plane stage. Then once we get all the large planes in check, then we're going to move into the small plane stage. And then the selective render. A little more cadmium red, nickel yellow. Try to get more of an orange for that. Okay, so now we're getting a nice little shape or edge there for the hairline. Remember the hairline is the softest edge usually. A little more burnt umber, ultra marine blue, lizard and crimson permanent. We're gonna get this dark accent for the hair. I really like the way the hair is simplified there, kind of sergeant esque uh, type of simplification, meaning similar to another painter by the name John Singer Sargent. So that's, I just made up the word sergeant esque. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium red. Now we're going to start to paint in the shadow tone. Again, trying to keep the edge for the hairline rather soft. And see how I'm kind of putting in these transitioning planes. You're already getting a sense of dimensionality for the forehead, even though it hasn't even been, you know, 15 minutes. So again, this is a really fast way of creating form in a painting. You know, sometimes you'll see me do this. I'll jump right into the planes, large plane stage much faster. Other times, you know, I'll, I'll work a little more slowly um, with the with the block in. Really just depends on how I'm feeling on that given day. So now going back in with the shadow tone, we're going to leave this dark accent there. A little bit more red. Okay, so now I'm going to get a separate brush. Or how about a smaller brush? Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, mix up a background color. Because with profile, you really want to think about the contour. So, it's no surprise that we're going to jump right into this shape here. 
Okay, we're just gonna place that down. I'm gonna switch back to the shadow brush. Probably get a little darker. Now let's establish where the nasal bone is. Somewhere up there. So I'll very quickly try to map out this contour. All right, back to the shadow brush. The eyebrow, dark of the eyebrow. A little bit more cadmium red, nickel yellow. Lizarin permanent. Now we need a darker plane over here. Can't really get the right value. A little bit more lizarin. Yeah, I'm kind of used to using all of those um, colors on my palette that you saw uh, two videos ago. So this is my first time in a couple paintings that I've used a more limited palette. I think that this more uh, limited palette is a little easier to follow along than the extensive one. At least here you can see you know, exactly what mixtures I'm using. And as you can tell, you know, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I have a color value web going here. So working from lighter flesh tones to the darker ones, just like usual. Nothing terribly complicated here. So again, the contour of the nose is gonna get a little bit. See, whenever I'm trying to make an orange, I use my cadmium red and the, the nickel yellow. I make an orange kind of uh, lighter orange or a darker orange. This time I wanted to make it a little bit lighter. For the nose. So I'm moving the shape of the nose up a little bit. The value might be a little too light, so a little bit more ivory black. Okay, shadow brush. Gonna switch back to the shadow brush. Okay. I'm not worried too much about nostril uh, or, you know, like eyelash or anything like that. I'm more focused on the general shape of things you know if I get the general shape pretty well established and when I transition into small plane stage it shouldn't be that difficult to just you know start to put in uh, add smaller planes onto those larger planes okay so now we're going to start to develop the curvature here of the cheek again very much working plane by plane I'm going to switch to the light brush once I can find it. Where's my brush? Okay. Now we're going to start to build value for value, color for color, for better or for worse. Now we're starting to develop these planes. Okay. Now we're going to get even lighter. So now we'll use the titanium white, cadmium red, Nickel yellow. Okay, lighter and warmer. You're pretty much getting the Alla Prima experience with this one, aren't you? Again, just past the 20 minute mark. Okay. 
And now we're starting to put in all of these wonderful forms. Now it's going to get darker again as we move down. And now time to switch to the darker brush. Okay, so as we work all down here. It's going to get more, it's going to get a little bit cooler, so sap green. Sap, sap green all down towards here. Now it's going to go up in value again. Now darker. So we move towards here. Okay, and then darker again. Down here. More burnt umber. Lizard and permanent. Okay, a little bit more yellow ochre. We're gonna start to solidify this shadow shape. We didn't draw it in the um, the umber sketch, so we're going to have to be a little more cautious with the corner here. Okay, value for value, brush stroke per brush stroke, a little more ivory black, a lizard. We're going to put in the back side of our model's neck. Okay. A little bit more alizarin. And no extra medium, okay? No medium. Just paint at this stage. Now that we have the dark up there, I as well put the dark over here. Okay. Now we have the ear kind of where we want it to fit. Let's push this the neck back a little more. There we go. All right, now back to the light brush. Gonna start to emerge out of the shadow over here beneath the the neck. Actually, gonna switch back to the shadow brush. A little more of a uh, a plane here for the neck. A little bit more of a dark orangey tone. All right, now we'll switch back to the light brush. Start to put in the curvature of the form. Now a little bit more titanium white. Now it's getting lighter as so we move up towards the neck. Much lighter over here. Okay. And now I'm gonna Put a little bit of mineral spirits on that brush. Go back into the titanium white. See, I'm kind of digging into the paint a little bit. So titanium white, ultramarine blue. Now we're gonna start to push the collar up. So we're pretty much drawing with color here. Okay, so there we have the bottom part and again this is all in the large plane stage okay not trying to put any kind of specific details or anything like that they're not needed yet they may not be needed at all I'm not sure we'll find out switching back to the shadow brush 
gonna change the hue up a little bit as we start to put in this this kind of uh, careful shadow underneath of the chin there we go very simple all right now we establish the bottom of the chin okay still no need to worry about specifics still focusing on that general shape now we're going to make it a little warmer so we're putting some more of the burnt umber going to thin the paint out a little bit ultramarine blue okay ultramarine blue more titanium white and ultramarine blue i'm going to have to add more ultramarine blue in a little bit Okay, we're just filling out the background now. Really digging in there for more ultramarine blue. So now I'm going to have to add a little bit more titanium white as we move on down towards here. Got a nice little kind of off gray purple going on, though I think it's more green. It's a little more sap green. So we're really trying to treat this kind of like an impressionist painting, uh, meaning focusing a lot with the color and drawing with color, trying to get the, the effect of light. So I think we've got the effect of light. And it looks like we're still under 30 minutes, so. Whoops, there goes the nose. But yeah, I'd say that's the most I've done in 30 minutes. In terms of covering a canvas, that is, uh, with the large plane stage. So I think that's going to be about good for the large plane stage. Um, now what I'm going to do is get out smaller brushes and start to add some more clarity to these forms. All right, so we've got out some smaller brushes. Again, link in the description. Uh, but first, what I'm going to try to do is um, with a clean and dry synthetic. Just trying to get rid of this glare. Just by moving the brush strokes in the direction of the light in the studio. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and start to get into some of these smaller shapes. So I did add some more titanium white, but see that it started kind of leaking down towards there, but oh well, we'll be fine. So um, I'm gonna have to strategize here. So what would you say, where would I start to develop, um, you know, smaller planes? Where would I start the small plane stage? If you're thinking the main triangle, you're definitely correct. So now I'm going to start to develop the main triangle. Okay, so remember the main triangle, the two eyes and the nose. Okay, but in this case, since it is a profile, profile view, um, we're not going to have to worry too much about, you know, the two eyes, uh, but there is a little glimpse of the uh, other eyebrow over there. So a little bit of burnt umber into here. I'm probably not going to need medium for this at all uh, since we have already got some linseed oil from the oil paint that dripped over there. So a little more light on the nose there. OK. 
Okay, I'm gonna stand back or sit back. So every time I stand back or sit back, if you are drawing or painting along with me, that is an open invitation for you to stand back or sit back as well. A little bit of the dark for the bottom of the nose. A little bit more alizarin, cadmium red. All right, I'm gonna have to switch into uh, the background brush once I find it. Okay, there it is. Again, to try to clarify that contour. And no, the audio didn't die. I'm just, uh, again, quiet because I'm more focused. So you've got time. If you want to draw or paint along with me, I know you have your sketchbook over there. Go and get the sketchbook. I'm kind of using the same brush due to complete laziness um, for all of these shapes. I mean, the values are fairly compressed in here. Um, so I should probably be sticking with the main triangle. See, what am I doing? Why am I working on the mouth? See, so, sometimes talking you through this actually uh, also helps me realize when I'm doing something wrong. So yeah, I need to return back to the main triangle. Now we're gonna clarify the dark over here for the eye. And I'm gonna try to make all of the brush strokes in this direction, um, you know, just so I don't have too much glare. So right now I'm just trying to, you know, create this little passage of form. Though I think, um, just to be practical, 
I think it would be better to just use a soft brush just to kind of blur over here to get that edge. There we go, that's that edge, the edge I was talking about. Um, so over here, yeah, I'm gonna blur over here to get that softer edge. When in doubt, blur it out. But in this case, I think the blurring is helping a little bit. I think it's the linseed, uh, the linseed that came down here. It's making the paint a little too slick. I'm just pushing the the nose out a little more. And just subtracting some of the areas with the extra linseed oil that's one of the nice things about glass palettes so easy to clean and if you're uh, curious about this setup uh, the palette setup this is a sheet of glass that's over top of a uh, piece of uh, like gray I don't, know, I don't know if it's painted gray, but it's some type, some type of gray cardboard. That's all it is. Nothing too fancy there. You know, this is a f really complicated uh, setup. Uh, you know, the face being half in shadow. Because it, the parts that are in light are so, like over here, are so difficult to read with the way that this lighting is uh, set up. It's very difficult. I think this is even more difficult of an arrangement than the Caravaggio that we did before. There we go. At least that part's starting to work out. 
up here. Not so much down there yet. But there, we're getting that to work out. So if you struggle um, a lot in your, you know, your own painting, your portrait painting, yep, I do too. But we overcome this, you know. It is, like anything, problem solving. This really teaches you how to problem solve. Alright, so now obviously the eyebrow needs to come down. This shadow can get, it appears like it can get a little darker, but I don't know. I think the whole complexity of this, I think, is the natural lighting. Natural light, um, you know, makes this softer edge. I'm actually going to have to use this softening brush for painting. Everything is just so soft. Yeah, but don't worry, I got plenty of brushes that I use for, um, you know, softening stuff. But this one I'm actually going to have to use for painting now. This is like um, impossibly soft, if that's even a word, if that's even a term that I can put out there. And of course I'm going to have to drop the hairline a little bit there. Let's just use the old drawing brush for that. And let's see if we can get away with using this to put the eyebrow back. Or the eyebrows. Putting the eyebrows back. So we kind of messed it up, but kind of, uh, well, we I lost the drawing a little bit, but I got the softness of the edges that I wanted. Not sure if that was a, a good enough trade-off, but I now have the edge work that I wanted. I just have to get the drawing back. Okay, so I'm going to do this again to see if the top is working. It appears that it's working. So this means I have to move around now from the main triangle. So we're going to work down here now. A little bit of the sap green. So this is a, a first, I think, for me actually using this brush uh, for painting. I usually just use it for softening. Oh man, there's all kinds of struggle going on with this one. Let's 
just the softness is so difficult to obtain here. Let me tell you one thing. Cecilia Bow was a master at edge work. That's for sure. Having trouble keeping up with her edge work. And of course, um, I have to push the ramus of the jaw further out to the right. Darn. <laughs> Whoops. Made that too dark. This is definitely one complicated value arrangement. I'll be interested in seeing if I can even pull this off. All right, so since I moved the ramus that way, uh, as a consequence, I am gonna have to move the shadow or the edge of the shadow out to the right as well. And then, of course, as such, I'm going to have to do the same with the, um, the hair. And we're going to just use burnt umber for that. And then after doing that, I see that this can go back, this can go higher up a little bit. Okay. Oh, everything, everything's moving now. I'm gonna have to move that shape over to the right. But as we're doing this, I mean, we can also you know, push the subtlety in these values as well. See how easy it is to move? That's the beauty of oil paint. It's very flexible, malleable. Let's see with how much we can get away with in this painting. You know, how little can we do and get the still get the big picture to read. But you know what, that isn't even fair because this this painting, the uh, the original master painting by Cecilia Bow already has done that for us. Uh, it's so well simplified the way she did it. You know, just the right brush strokes in the right spot. It wasn't just Sargent that could do that. You know, while we have this brush, let's do something risky. Now we're painting in the hair. It looks like she used a little bit of blue in here. I'm a little hesitant to do that, but let's do it. Let's do it. Very hesitant to put the blue in there. 
although you can't see it it's glaring okay that's a little better Of course, this has to push back. Let's get more of the the blue. I'm a little afraid to do that, but let's do it. And again, it's glaring. Sorry about that. Trying to reduce the glare so you could see. It's a little better, I guess. Okay. Ow, sorry. Now with the same brush, I'm gonna put in the dark. So the alizarin and the ivory black. Nope. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna switch brushes for that. Where's my brush? Yeah, let's use this one. Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle. Again, that should be typed out for you in the description box down below. This is one of my favorite types of brushes. So this one is kind of worn out, but it does make, still does make really nice brush strokes. I just kind of got distracted with the hair. Once I started putting those lights in the hair, I'm just all about painting the hair now. But eventually I'll get back into here. Yeah, so, um... Have any of you seen Cecilia Bell painting, paintings, uh, Cecilia Bell paintings in person? They're quite nice. Again, ki again, kind of Sargent-esque. I saw, um, uh, I think it was one in the National Gallery of Art in DC, since I live very close to there. Okay, all right, I'm not going to worry about the hair too much more, except for the edge of the hair needs a little clarification. This point has to go down a little bit relative to this point. Okay, that's much better, I guess. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back into these shapes, the ones I've been avoiding. I would like to keep avoiding them, but let's do it. Uh, wait, that's the background brush. Let's get my brushes in order here. This is a very complicated shape, so I'm going to do my best to simplify it first. So again, you've seen exactly what mixtures I made for each area. So again, hopefully this helps. And again, sorry, uh, the video last time got messed up um, with the, the palette footage.
Uh, so now with a smaller brush, I'm going to start to put in the light for the ear. And again, no extra medium. Look at me. I'm still avoiding the, the mouth by going straight to the ear. Eventually I'll get there. Promise. Probably shouldn't promise that, but eventually I should get there. Just cleaning off the brush with odorless mineral spirits a little bit. It's partially clean, cleaned it. Put in a mark for the tragus of the ear there. And the light side for the tragus. All right, and as it, as it seems, I'm still avoiding the mouth, but um, I can't do that. Uh, see, I just can't keep avoiding the mouth. So more burnt umber into this area here. A little bit of cadmium red. There we go. Now we put the dark for the mouth where it needs to be. Don't mind that, that's just my phone ringing because I forgot to keep it out of the studio. So you probably can't hear it with this microphone. Well, I hope you can't. All right, now what, how do I do this? <laughs> so th for the mouth, I'm going to go ahead, change the hue. So sap green. I think this is the first time we've painted a smile, especially a smile on a profile view with the head tilted. Oh man, this is complicated. Very complicated. If I was wearing a hat, hats off to Cecilia Bow. This is no simple master study. And remember, a master study is a learning exercise with a painting as an end result, okay? It's not intended to make a perfect uh, rendition of the original painting. Just by the very act of observing, you know, looking at this uh, masterful painting for such a long time is a very good learning experience. I guess the word is uh, looking with intent. Um, I don't know if that's the right word, but or the right phrase, but just a very act of studying this painting, really. And again, this is a cropped version. This is actually a double portrait, the original one. The uncropped version is a double portrait. This little form overlap for the bottom of the chin should help a lot. 
if we can paint that in. There we go. Now we're making some strides. What's going on with the chin? There is something I can't quite figure out there. The border of the chin is... There. So it looks like uh, Cecilia pushed the expressiveness of the chin a little bit. Well, I guess with the, you know, the, uh, this part of your skin moving up when you're smiling, in theory, this should move up too, right? So that's probably what I'm seeing there. So I'm going to use this color that I just mixed up here to clarify what I'm talking about. There. There's a lot of brushiness to this painting that I really enjoy. So I'm going to leave the master study fairly brushy as well. And as you notice, I'm fairly quiet with uh, today's episode. Like I, um, like I usually say, there are moments where, you know, I have to be in complete focus and I'm very quiet. But it seems like with this one, I've been more quiet. Uh, so what does that say? This is very. This one is very difficult. Very difficult indeed. Or maybe it's not that it's any more difficult than say the Caravaggio or the Da Vinci or the Rembrandt or the ones we were doing before. It's just this is a very unusual light uh, light setup. Very unusual. Which makes it difficult for me in particular, maybe not as difficult for you depending on what kind of light setups you paint from, but uh, this is just a lighting setup set that I'm just not used to. And I'm finding myself really uh, relying on softer brushes more often with this one, for sure. Just cleaning off that brush on the side. So I can get this darker color now. There. And again, talk about difficulty with edges. I'm gonna, get, gonna have to get another softening brush.
soften over here now. Oh no, <laughs> the softening brush is like, it's too, never mind, I just dropped it. That softening brush was defective. So I switched to another one. Like I said, I have a lot of these. There we go. Now, as it as it is, um, I still need to describe this there's a little plane here that's why i left this a little bit sharp so there is a plane that goes over down and then in towards here so let me get out uh, the other brush that i had where's my brush keep misplacing my brushes uh let's say let's use oh whatever let's use this one so the plane in question is a little bit cooler. A little more sap green. So here, this is the plane I'm talking about. It goes over and down. And then of course I can't um, I can't not paint the hair in here. So burnt umber, ultramarine blue, just a tiny bit. The hair actually covers the tragus of the ear a little bit. So what I'm gonna do. Um, to paint that little overlap of here. A little bit of mineral spirits onto this brush. Let's see if we can do this. And we can. So thin paint tends to stick onto a thicker paint. So that's how we can layer like that. A la prima. There. We're gonna thin it out even more. All kinds of little strands of hair. And here I am, again, running away <laughs> from the difficult task of the mouth. So while the paint is kind of thin, I do want to make this edge a little sharper. Okay. And now just very lightly, very lightly, soften down there, soften over here. What a powerful painting this one is though, the, the original. Now just very lightly, very lightly. I don't want to lose that edge, so I just softened it only a little bit. Now back again with the background brush. Oh, as soon as I find it. There it is. Okay, so the background is a little more yellow. Okay, so a little more yellow ochre. And then while we're doing that, we can still push this shadow a little darker to add more contrast, more form, therefore. Now back with the background brush.
All right, so obviously it's glaring a lot, so let's try to get rid of the glare. Okay, now where was I? Now back to this area that I keep avoiding. I think the chin still comes out a little more. To there. About to there. This is a very interesting shape, nonetheless. Now back to the darker brush. Okay, now I'm going to sit back. Okay, so I see that this is still kind of bothering me, so when in doubt, blur it out. So I'm just going to soften the edges around the eyes, around the eye. Let's try to create the effect that I want. There we go. I like that, that effect. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and revisit these planes. So I'm going to switch back to the um, the other brush that I was using, that I usually use as a uh, softening brush, but now I'm using as a additive painting brush, as opposed to, again, softening brush. So again, I think these values can get a little darker. Now I'm going to switch back to the softening brush. Just back and forth between these brushes. Try to get the effect that I'm after with these edges. Again, no simple task.
Okay, now we're starting to get the edge work that I was after. Now I have to push the light over here for the skin tones. So I'll go back to that uh, larger bristle brush from earlier. And then I'm going to go ahead and push the light down here yet again some more. So again, if you're drawing or painting along with me, watch out for those edges. All right, different brush here. Ultra, tiniest bit of ultra marine blue. The titanium white. See how much further we could go. And that still has the um, ultra marine blue. So it's again, not the, you know, it's not the straight you know, titanium white out of the tube. But very close to it. I'm going to kind of make this up, the, um, the light over here. I think that looks a little better. Still want to keep the brushiness though, so don't want to lose the brushiness. Where's the background brush? All right, so we're gonna push this down a little bit, not much. Add a little bit of blue. All right, now we have a nice little gradation of tone for that. All right, so I think the last thing I will do is just try to get rid of some of this glare here so I can uh, photograph this master study a little bit better and then we'll be done. Again, it's not supposed to be a, you know, master copy. It's not supposed to be I shouldn't say that. It's not supposed to be a perfect photographic rendition, okay? Because even in academic studies, uh, master copies are actually, uh, from my understanding, not intended to be perfect uh, photographic renditions of the original painting as, uh, either. So probably shouldn't say that. In any case, let's just go ahead, spread this down here. What I'm doing right now is just the... Uh, I'm basically finishing up the selective render, so I'm just kind of polishing the painting and getting it ready for uh, being photographed. The less glare, the better. And man, this, this one was very difficult uh, with the edge work, but I really do enjoy the... Um, you know, the values that we were able to get out of this. And of course, like, again, the edge work. This is definitely, definitely going to help you improve your edges. You know, if you're trying to improve on your edge work, give this master study a try. Give this master study a go. It's definitely worth it. It's, it's definitely been pushing me to develop new tricks. Uh, basically with how I control my edges, which is something you're seeing me do right now as I'm talking. I'm still uh, kind of closing up these edges. All right, I'm going to sit back again and make sure that the painting isn't glaring too much and is ready for photography. All right, at this point, I'm just over softening. So anyway, that should be about it. Let me just get rid of this brush. 
and all right that being said i really do hope that today's episode helps you out i highly encourage you to do this uh, master study again don't don't get too hung up on trying to create a perfect photographic finish or trying to make it look exactly like the photo reference because that's not what these um you know these learning exercises about are about sorry they're about you know observing the original master painting and just the very act of uh, observing again with the in, the intent of recreating that painting using your own techniques i think is an extremely useful learning experience again i wish you the best in all of your artwork and i'll see you on the next episode and of course i'm still softening edges so after finishing the the video i came back and i saw this so yeah just using another brush to soften that see like i said this one is very difficult in terms of the edge work okay okay enough with that take care i'll see you again on the next one